Hello there gamers, welcome back, this is the Madcap Gamer and today we are getting ancient. Um, this game is called Tablut, Tablut, Tab Tablet, um, not quite sure of the pronunciation, there's a bunch of other Viking and Welsh names for the game, but they're even more impossible to pronounce. So T-A-B-L-U-T, I will let you decide. Um, tablet is pretty much what I'm going to be calling it for the rest of this video. Um, this game is very similar to chess. It has been played in the Nordic Celtic regions of Europe for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, kind of went out of fashion when chess came in in the 13th century. So it was played many hundreds of years before that. So you can imagine how ancient this game is. Um, it's actually been played by the native sort of Norwegian, um, Scandinavian peoples right up to the 18th century, um, and that's the most comprehensive rules we've got for the game. So this is a nine square by nine square board. Um, there are versions which is like 11 square by 11 square and a lot more pieces, um, but that is the rules that survive most intact to this day. So they're the rules that we're going to be using. And even then there are some rules where people argue, it's kind of like my video on Yuka. Um, use the rules that you are most comfortable with. This is the board itself, as you can see, nine by nine. The squares that you're going to use to set up your black and white pieces in are um, marked very clearly, which is a bonus. Uh, the only thing I'll say is if you do get a board, if you like the setup and the rules, uh, try and get a board that has a different sort of symbol or paint scheme on this middle part here. Because this middle part is actually called the throne. That's where the king is going to start for the white player. The attacking player doesn't have a king. It's only one team trying to capture the king of the other side. So this part will actually play a role later in the game once you move the king out of there. So um, I would get a board that has that more clearly marked. But anyway, we're going to get to the setup because the setup is the same no matter how you play the game, and it's very, very simple. So the king goes in the middle, and his white defenders, if you like, this is the defending army, and they're tasked with defending the king. The attackers take up the black squares and have the black pieces, and they go just like so. All of the boards that you'll find for the tablet will have these sort of marked out areas in in some sense, whether how, how ornate or elaborate it is, doesn't really matter, but they'll be marked out for you. So you don't have to keep that in mind, it'll be there. So before we go into the rules of how each of the pieces work, let me just explain the goal of the game. So the goal of the game to capture the king, basically what you need to do is you need to pretty much surround the king. Now he can be surrounded against a piece in the middle. He can be surrounded on either side. That will capture him uh, either side by defenders and then you win the game. So it's, it's much less uh, elaborate than chess where the king gets like a chance to move away. Um, once you've moved into a position where you've got pieces on either side, you've captured the king. Awesome. Done. Now the king's job in this game is to get off the board. Now the king, unlike the king in chess, uh, moves as far as he wants, um, straight horizontally or vertically. So as soon as he gets into a position where your opponent maybe hasn't seen or doesn't have an option, you've got exits, he can go straight off the board, it's a clear run, then the king escapes and the white team wins the game. There are two very different goals to playing the game and very different um, strategies to winning the game, depending on which side you're on. So it's actually a game where you can play one side as black, one side as white, and unlike chess, you know, it completely changes the game. So how do you play? Let's get into the nitty gritty. So like I said, it's very similar to how chess works. All of these pieces uh, work the same, all these flat pieces. Even the king works the same as the other pieces. And what they do is they move off orthogonally, uh, straight, vertical, or horizontal, as far as they want. They can go anywhere they want in a straight line, one way or the other, but they can never jump over another piece on the board. 
The goal is to capture enemy pieces to remove them from the board. Uh, for the black player, you want to do this so you can get to the king. Um, for the white player, you want to clear a path to get the king out. And the more black pieces are on the board, the more they can block off his exits. So the way to capture an enemy piece is to move two of your pieces. You get one move per turn, and it's the opponent's turn, just like in chess. So you need to think ahead, and you move a piece, your know, white player moves a piece, and then you have another piece of yours, you move it to the other side. This piece in the middle gets captured, okay? Same with the white player. Now, important thing to remember, because it will affect your game, is that if you move into a capture spot, you're fine. The enemy has to capture you, not the other way around. So for instance, if I moved, uh, say, this white piece here, and the first thing that the black player did was to move this piece here. He's moved into a position where he could be captured, but he's the one that moved there. So he's fine to stay where he is. You would have to move this white piece back and then, like, and then move back into that position in order to take that particular black piece. So you can move into a captured position, but if someone captures you, you are off the board. So as we move pieces around, we can see how the board starts to clear up. You can see some openings happening where the black player can attack and take more white pieces. The white player can defend um, or attack and take more black pieces. Now, of course, moving the king out of this spot and not immediately off the board is problematic. And I'll tell you what, once the king is off the throne, the throne piece here counts as an edge of the board. Um, and you can actually capture pieces by pinning them, not just one of your troops on either side, but you can have them pinned by having them against the edge of the board. Now it may seem at this point like it's really, really easy to take the king, but I can tell you, having played this game many, many times, it's actually usually the defender's side that wins because after doing a lot of attacking and taking pieces on either side, um, you can see this side is getting rather sparse. Um, another couple of moves and you can get that one in there and that one, he's gone. And then what you can do is you can actually block the other pieces. So if I put this guy here, then the king moves there, black player sort of chases, and tries to get them but can't catch up. The king moves here, goes all the way up to try and stop him, but there is a straight exit, okay? So it's almost like a sort of NFL game, really. You've got these blockers as well. So this blocks the black player from interrupting the king. Um, over here, you can have this guy sort of block and get in the way, but two turns later, he will be gone as well. So in case that was a little bit confusing, I might just have a lightning round where I play both sides and show you how it's done. I'll stop yakking and just go through a average game of tap. A pretty intense, um, any side can win at any moment sort of game. Um, I was actually just playing that version um, and thinking that the king was gone. Wasn't until after that last move that I realized in taking that one in the middle, made a complete opening to escape. So it's very unpredictable. Um, it's one of those games where you think about like chess, really sort of carefully putting things together and then suddenly out of nowhere, it's 
the winning move. It's not like chess where it's like checkmate, 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 and you sort of keep going and, and refining until you really corner the king. Um, the game is won and lost in an instant. Then you re-rack, start again, and change sides. Um, it is a lot of fun. It's pretty much, like I said, an arcade version of chess. Instead of playing a chess game for 20 minutes, half an hour, this thing could go for anywhere from two minutes to 20 minutes. I've not seen a game go, for, actually, I haven't seen a game go for longer than 10 minutes, really. So um, it's fun, it's uh, replayable, it's probably something that you could learn um, to be, you know, one of those chess-like games where you've got two expert players that actually does take a good long while to play. Um, I can't figure out how <laughs> I've uh, used all the moves and all the trickery that I can think of, but it exercises the brain. It doesn't take too much setup. There's no cards, there's no dice. It's not like a big grand board game. Uh, it's nice and simple, faster and simpler than even checkers, backgammon, chess, all those classic games. This is probably one of the simplest and easiest to play. Certainly a enjoyable, quick and fun, easy to learn little game that's hundreds and hundreds, maybe over a thousand years old. So not a bad effort. That's all for us today from the Madcap Gamer. Uh, keep on gaming and I'll see you in the next video.